Hello, Matrix. Critical to your success in both analytical and Euclidean geometry is a thorough knowledge and understanding of quadrilaterals. This video is an exercise in simple logic. Have your pencil and paper ready and embark on a self-study to own this topic. Pause as often and as long as you need. We have now reached the last of the pre-grade 12 sections, quadrilaterals, sides, angles, diagonals, definitions, properties, and areas. This is an intense summary that you will be comfortable with by the end of these videos and should always revisit. It contains all you need to know about quadrilaterals and appears in all grade 10 to 12 maths answer series study guides. It has to be part of your arsenal of knowledge. The logic is going to arise from the refining of quadrilaterals along various routes as they accumulate more and more properties. Starting with any quadrilateral and then refining all the way to the square, the ultimate quadrilateral. From any quadrilateral to a trapezium, a parallelogram, a rectangle to the square, or from the parallelogram to a rhombus to a square, or a completely different route from any quadrilateral to the kite, and then the rhombus, and then the square. Pause to consider sides, angles, diagonals. Parallel sides. Pause to view this aspect along all the routes. A trapezium has one pair of parallel sides. A parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. And this will apply forever after to all quadrilaterals that follow the parallelogram, because this is our logic. Obviously, a kite has no parallel sides. Equal sides. Pause to view this aspect along all the routes. From any quadrilateral to a kite, where we have two pairs of adjacent sides equal, through to the rhombus, where all four sides are equal. This is true for a square, since a square is actually just a special rhombus. From any quadrilateral to the parallelogram, where we have two pairs of opposite sides equal. And therefore, this is also true for the rectangle. Diagonals. A diagonal of a quadrilateral is a line joining opposite vertices. Pause to observe the diagonal in each figure along the three roots, and then answer the question below. Which quadrilaterals have their areas bisected by a diagonal? Not this one, not the trapezium, but in the parallelogram, the diagonal does bisect the area. Again, true for all the quadrilaterals that follow. The long diagonal of a kite bisects the area, but the short one does not. Investigating diagonals. How do we find the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral? And a pentagon and a hexagon? Pause to try as you notice that the diagonal divides the quadrilateral into two triangles. The sum of the interior angles equals A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. Therefore, equal to 2 times 180 degrees, the sum of the angles of each triangle. And the sum of the interior angles of any quadrilateral is therefore equal to 360 degrees. Pause now while you continue the pattern as entered for the quadrilateral. The number of sides, the number of diagonals, the number of triangles, and the sum of the interior angles. Now do the same for a pentagon, a hexagon, and a polygon with n sides. Check your entries, especially the final result for the polygon with n sides. The sum of the interior angles is n minus 2 times 180 degrees. For example, the sum of the interior angles of an octagon would be 8 minus 2 times 180 degrees. Can you derive a formula for the area of a trapezium, again using a diagonal which divides the trapezium into two triangles? 
Note the parallel sides, A and B, and the distance between them, or height, H. The area of the trapezium equals triangle 1 plus triangle 2. A half A times H plus a half B times H, which equals a half A plus B times H, since we have taken out the common factor half and H. The area of a trapezium is therefore equal to half the sum of the parallel sides times the distance between them. Pause to repeat this formula a number of times in words. Can you derive a formula for the area of a kite? This time we use both diagonals. Pause to try. Given diagonals A and B, we notice that the long diagonal B bisects the short diagonal A and it bisects the area of the kite into two equal triangles. In both triangles, B is the base and A over 2 is the height. And the area of each triangle is half base times height. So if we have a look at the contents in this bracket here, the area of one triangle is a half of the base B times the height A over 2. The area of the kite is, however, twice that. The twos cancel and we are left with this portion, AB over 2, the product of the diagonals divided by 2. Or we can say the area of a kite is half the product of the diagonals. Pause to repeat this formula a number of times. Could this formula apply to a rhombus and to a square? Yes, in both cases, because a rhombus and a square are just special kites. Now, draw in a second diagonal. Pause as you consider each quadrilateral and determine in which quadrilaterals the diagonals bisect each other intersect at right angles, bisect the angles of the quadrilateral, or are equal. So, how did you do? Pause to check your answers. Did you apply the logic? The diagonals bisect one another in a parallelogram, and therefore in a rectangle, a rhombus, and a square. They intersect at right angles in a kite, and therefore in a rhombus and a square. They bisect the angles of the quadrilateral in a rhombus and therefore also in a square. And they're equal in a rectangle and therefore also in a square. Pause to reinforce this thinking. Pause to study a summary of facts about the diagonals of each quadrilateral noting especially the proving of facts about the diagonals of a rhombus, which are very busy. The square, since a square is a rectangle, a rhombus, a parallelogram, a kite, all the properties of these quadrilaterals apply to the square. Now, a summary of the areas of quadrilaterals. We have already derived a formula for the area of a trapezium and for the kite and the areas of a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a square are familiar to us. But the area of a rhombus is particularly interesting. It is both half the product of the diagonals, since the rhombus is actually just a special kite. It is also base times height, as you can see there, because the rhombus is just a special parallelogram. Pause to study these methods, facts, and formulae. Thank you for taking part in this self-study exercise. I trust that you found exploring the roots to be a route to simplicity when mastering quadrilaterals. Be inspired as you now proceed to part two with confidence, the defining of all quadrilaterals. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. 
So that's it for now from the answer series, your key to exam success.